off that inside wall. It lets you shoot off the curbs, and generally that looks to be the quicker way to do it. Then you follow the stagger of the track and lean your way to the inside before missing that little chevron that sends you back to center. Now into lap number nine. Galactic and the Hazers up in front. Oh, Rangers are pole sitters all the way down in fifth. But this is anybody's race thus far, heading into the penultimate lap. Moving to the inside, Hazers. Now, on the inside of the next turn, Galactic gets by. Already several lengths lead for them. Team Primary looks to pounce off the momentary slowing. That may make, let Galactic get a big lead heading into the final lap. They're slow off of that turn though, and they head into the pit lane. Also, Hazers do the same. It's a slightly slower way around, but not the end of the world. Galactic will have a narrow lead coming off the ramp. Can they hold it? They jump to the side a little bit, but they do hold the lead into the final lap of the opening Grand Prix of Marmula One. Two to the outside, one to the end. That's the Hazers on the inside. Now they get a great launch off the jump and move into second place. Galactic still up in front. They launch around those curves. Snowball's holding in fourth and a big gap back to our pole sitters. The O'Rangers with Clementine. Off the final turn. On the front stretch, heading into the final term, I should say. Team Galactic up in front. The Hazers are going to close right up in on them around the final turn. It will be Team Galactic and Starry getting the win. Who will it be? For gold in the funnel endurance in event number three of the Marble League. Let the clock start ticking. It doesn't matter what your time is, just so long as you stay in longer than everybody else. And so far, it's the Thunderbolts that get off to a good lead. Like the opposite is true as you look farther down the course. Savage Speeders take the lead as I say that. They're going to enter the next funnel along with Minty Maniacs who vacate that one very quickly. It's Thunderbolts and Savage Speeders holding on to the lead. Minty Drizzle was fighting in there as well, and now, as I say, that falls on through along with Cyanai, who had been in the green funnels for a little while. Also, Balls of Chaos down there with Clutter. Ducky will join them. Three-way battle up top becomes a two-marble back and forth with the O-Rangers and the Bumblebees. Bumblebees sitting in ninth in the standings. O-Rangers up in second. Already dangerously close to the Thunderbolts, going from the lead, nearly to dropping on through, but that dubious distinction will go to the Green Ducks. Ducky could not hold on and keep that momentum wide. It will be the Thunderbolts next as the Savage Speeders retook the lead. They try to keep a wide angle, but bumping into some marbles already has them in the bottom part of that funnel, ready to drop on through. And could we have the entire field once again in a single funnel? And we will. This is where you can really make up a lot of time and totally change the trajectory of your race. Who will fall on through? First, it will be the O-Rangers. Kinoan could not keep it up. Oh, look at Minty Maniacs. They're dangerously close to moving through into the last funnel, and they do. Bumblebees hold the lead. They need to stay as wide as they can and get away from that melee in the middle, but they're getting caught up in it a little bit. I think they may have held on to the lead. No, they didn't. They were usurped from the lead. Who is that shaking on through? It's Cyanai. Crazy Cat's Eyes took the lead. Who will finish last? It will be the Thunderbolts. Then the Bumblebees. They could not hold on to it. Crazy Cat's Eyes next. Balls of Chaos in there along with three ducks. Oh, Rangers fall on through to take the silver. And it will be Minty Maniacs. Another gold medal. Minty Drizzle, 208.71. The Minty Maniacs absolutely beside themselves, living up to the second part of their name at least, because they have just won their second gold medal in three events. Thank you very much for joining us here for the second round of Marbula E. This is the Soul M Prix. Oh, that wasn't neat onto the conveyor belt for Mercedes. It's always walking a fine line of how much speed versus how much precision do you need. We see a lot of competitors riding the curbs all the way around through that first sector to try to build up some more speed into the middle part of the course. Two for the lead. Oh, oh. Mahindra, that's gone horribly wrong for the race leaders. Everything was looking so comfortable, but now they've dropped down into fourth position. You can just imagine Dilbag Gill watching this, watching a lead slip away. He'll be so disappointed. One more lap to go after this as you see the clock counts down to zero. Their time is limited for how much they have left to compete. They've got to make their moves now. 
Porsche out in front as they come down to start the final lap of the race. Jaguar second, Mercedes third, Mahindra fourth, Neo fifth as they come onto the conveyor belt for the final time. There are Porsche out in front, but oh, not for long. Jaguar take them on the final lap. What a resurgent move right there after finishing second to last in the previous M Prix. They've got a great shot at victory here if they can keep the speed up and keep it off the walls. Is this going to be the first points of the year for Jaguar with a victory through the final corner? And it's Jaguar who win the sole M Prix. Porsche across the line in second. Mercedes hold on to their championship advantage in third. Mahindra fourth, Neo fifth, Venturi, Tachita, Audi, Dragon, BMW the top ten. Nissan in 11th, and I'm sorry to say... Billy still holding in fourth in front of Red Eye. Rima still holding fastest lap of the race. Now Billy gets by into third and will make a heck of a move to take second place only to lose out on the next turn. Did you see that? The camera was zoomed out. Oh, a hard impact there. And Smoggy is back to third. Ruzzy, Billy and Smoggy came together. The squeeze and the accordion outward completely changed the leading order of this race and Ruzzy Earned fastest lap in the process. Ruzzi's previous best finish was 11th back at the Aquamarine. Didn't even qualify at the raceway in the second Grand Prix of the season. This would be huge for the Raspberry Racers, who sit down in 15th in the standings with just 16 points across five rounds of competition. Smoggy has picked Billy there and left Billy in the dust. Kind of becoming a two marble race past the halfway point. We see several marbles enter the right side of that split only to just barrel across it as they work their way through it. Here comes Billy! Great move to take the lead from Ruzzy. Late breaking, but Ruzzy trying to fight right back. Between the two of them, one length. And it's Smoggy and Red Eye. Clementon in fifth, got by Wispy and Ocean. Billy and Ruzzi, a snowy sets fastest lap, 26-17, that's a good number. The duck quacks are getting louder, they can feel it. One lap to go for Billy. This would be the best finish of the entire season. Could Billy go pole to flag? He can lead every single lap, but he lead the ones that matter. Billy into the third sector for the final time. Around the final turn, Green Ducks usually take well to water, but what if it's frozen? Billy says, I don't care. I want to win at the Arctic Circuit. Clevinson takes second. Ruzzy fills out the podium in third. The Hazers, Momo, Minty Maniacs, and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Minty Maniacs. A good launch out of the gate, but the Hazers respond well and stretch the lead. They'll cruise to a victory. And hold on, that's a new Marble League record. The Hazers broke the world record set back in 2015. That's a record that stood for a long time and several Marble Leagues. Phenomenal performance. We're gonna be having some big discussions within that team tonight. Semi-final A, Oceanics, Green Ducks, Savage Speeders and the Hazers, Oceanics, stretching it again. And can you believe it? The Oceanics have reset the record. We've had it fall again. And after a great performance in the Moguls, the Oceanics have come to play. Question is who got second place? I think it's Savage Speeders. But the Oceanics with a Marble League record. It is Savage Speeders by one thousandth of a second. Velocity Pip Smoggy. The marbles are looking sharp today. Go down the front stretch. Carry some good speed through the chicane. Nice move by Yellow Eye, but an even better move by Hazy. Makes two spots on the exit of the chicane and almost makes another coming into the third sector. Now into the final couple of laps, Hazy tries to make a move on Limeline. Can't get that one done. They're gonna be very close, Limeline, Starry, and Hazy. Bolt some trouble, getting off of the conveyor belt, and that lead is evaporated. 
Well, we've got a yellow flag now. Yellow flag, the curb is detached even more, and we're gonna have a safety marble. It's moved just another centimeter or so to the side, and we will have a safety marble to freeze this race. Hazy, Bolt, Lime Lime, and Starry, the current runners. Safety marble has been deployed. Well up ahead of the field. Gonna try to make that change to the curb before the field gets there. Hazy, well out in front, trying to turn this into a victory. From all the way back in 11th, here comes the safety marble. Gives it a little push, just barely, almost imperceptible, but that could make all the difference in the world. Hazy's gonna come across and wins for the first time this season. The Tumult Turnpike lives up to its name. seen how close it can come. Now for the final. Who gets the win in event number four of the last Marble Standing Games? The two teams, the Freshers and Milky Madness. Down they come, the Freshers have already lost one, as have Milky Madness. Oh, there goes another for the Freshers and the ball bearing. Will it knock down one of the Milky Madness ones out? No. One apiece for each team has knocked a domino down on the near side, but managed to stay on the board. Immediately tripping some of these edges and the ball bearings up top they come straight across and hit each other but look at upper left it's enough to take another member of the freshers off and i think that's a tie i see three to three so we're going to launch three marbles down as a tie break leave the dominoes where they are the freshers lose one they lose two but here come the ball bearings and again we may have a tie all this work marbles are gassed can you believe it Marble a marble it will be, depending on where this ball bearing creeps down to the bottom, unless it takes a sudden sharp turn over and decides to clear one of our competitors now. No, it'll just mosey through the existing opening. It was a pretty solid impact from both teams. Freshers losing one immediately. Two of Milky Madness managing to stay very close to each other and on the board, but once they trip that ball bearing, nothing doing. So it all comes down to a tie break. They may be used to that at Craven Cottage, but it's a first here at the Craven Dome. One apiece. What will they do here? The openings in the wall, will they come into effect? They just glance off of each other and Milky Madness will lose one to the bottom side. Freshers win. The glance was just enough and you have to wonder if that was strategy because look at where they're heading once they glance off of each other one marble is looking at a still composed wall of dominoes the other one has a big opening in it oh and look at how close though up top oh my gosh teetering over the edge were the freshers they had a little opening up there as well you couldn't quite see it from the shallow angle that was more dangerous than i thought Across the line and the gap has under a second under eight tenths in fact clutter and prim also watch behind hazy seems to be showing a little bit of speed final lap and look at the speed coming off there a huge bump by prim needs one more go is going to size him up down the pit straight and around into the front stretch are they going to make the move to the outside it's not going to work Clutter takes the win by five hundredths of a second over Prim from Team Primary. Hazy finishes in third and on the podium, well in front of Mallard and Clementine. Sitting up in fourth, it's been consistency all the way around. As we have a lead change, trouble on the bottom, Summer Sky up into the lead. Red number three in second, trying to track that leader down and does. Red number three gets by. Some difficulty back there. A rougher bottom path, and we've got a marble stopped there. Duct tape and Comet appear to be out. No, Comet is back going again. We're hearing from race control that Comet has gotten bump started. Red number three, still in the lead up front as the camera slowly tries to catch up at the end of sector two. That lead, not much. Oh, too quick for Ghost Plasma, and Ghost Plasma is out. Red number three, just a tenth of a second lead, has stretched up just a little bit with chaos behind. 
And Quicksilver has gotten going again. Apparently, Marbly McMarvel Face had come to a stop as well, but was dislodged and is back underway. Superball in third. Can see Lollipop up ahead, preoccupied with red number three. The trailing marbles up in that top left window. Black Knight, we're hearing, is also stuck. Better sand conditions, not leading to very many more finishers. Pollo Loco into fifth now with a little bit of a cushion down in the bottom part of this course. Red number three's lead. Is it unassailable? Can Lollipop get up there? A burst of speed trying to get in the draft. Lollipop to the left, up to the lead. Red number three running out of time to challenge it and is not going to be able to, but will take the second place finish. And he's pretty happy with that. El Capitan, same there. Super Bowl in fourth. Pollo Loco rounding out the top five. Lots to come. Still too big. Next spot. Raspberry Racers, Savage Speeders, O'Rangers and the Oceanics. Raspberry Racers and O'Rangers are out in front. The O'Rangers have done it again, but here come the Speeders in the lane right next to them. It's going to be the Savage Speeders that get the win. Well back of the field through that handoff, still in fourth. Fantastic transition there, and the anchor leg I think is going to bring it home. Yes, they will. The Savage Speeders have done it again. After the last event, they jumped two spots up into fifth. We're going to jump a little more here and a close battle between the O'Rangers and the Oceanics. Despite the Marble League record, the O'Rangers couldn't get the gold. Still, a good chunk of this Marble League to go. Oceanics, Savage Speeders, Hazers, and the Minty Maniacs. Also some difficulty coming out of the course, but it's the Oceanics out in front. But for how long? The Hazers are challenging. Minty Maniacs are challenging. Nobody's going to get by. Redemption for the Oceanics. But now, the final. The Savage Speeders and the Midnight Wisps, two of our top four teams. And it's the Wisps out to a short lead, but it's going to be evened up and surpassed by the Speeders as they go into the water. But things flip as they gather themselves underneath. It's the Wisps out in front. Can the Speeders put some speed together? This is going to be close. A dive to the inside. I'm not sure who got it. It's going to be a photo finish. Great moves. Don't be watching the first few marbles. Watching that next little wave because that's who made the difference. Going into the middle there. Catching the draft of the top two. The Wisps are gold medalists. Congratulations. Shoot you side to side instantly. Momo, Thunderbolts, Hazers, and Team Galactic are hosts. And it's Galactic who fall out to last place. They have some ground to make up, and they do. Trouble getting onto the track gets Galactic into second place behind the Hazers. Hazers not even looking over their shoulder at this point, just trying to focus on what's ahead of them. A lot of ground to be made up from third and fourth place right now. A great entry into the water by the Hazers and Galactic. If they can keep that speed up, they will advance to the final, but watch third place there. Momo is creeping up just a little bit. Speed is increasing as they drift toward the center of the track. Are they going to make the move? They do, but it's too late. I think it's too late for Momo. Look at the, just at the last second they pulled out to try to get around. And we'll wait for the photo finish here. Super slow-mo necessary. Oh, they got it. I think they did, by one hundredth of a second. Team Momo advances. Galactic gets fifth place. Decent result, but oh, right down to the wire. Great use of understanding fluid dynamics to make that move in the draft. Our top four, who will win gold? Hazers bumped hard, fall to last place. Rangers trying to track down the Hornets up ahead. Momo in third place. Can they pull off a come from behind once more? Dropping down the slide for the final time as they enter the water. It's anybody's race at this point. The O'Rangers make a move for the lead. Momo is going to try their same draft. They do. They close up almost too quickly. But now they can make a move for the lead. And they do. Everybody is right up there. The Hazers shoulder on through and will get the goal. It's officially going to be a photo finish. But while Momo and the Rangers were fighting, the Hazers said, pardon me, I'm coming through. Foggy gets the win by a tenth of a second over Momo. 
Orangen comes in third. Stinger, the captain of the Hornets, picks up 12 points. In fourth place, 